Welcome to another episode of the BTCC Roundup Show. My name's Sean Hollenby. I'm here chatting with my guest, Matt Salisbury, who's given us all the stats and info from the weekend. And also Michael Grease, who had a great weekend at Brands Hatch last time out in his Powermax Racing Vauxhall Astra. And he's been telling us all about that. Also about his history coming into motorsport, which is always interesting. I'll just quickly explain where I'm sitting in a bar in Greece. It's early, so I'm just having breakfast. So we haven't started early. So it's, uh, it's always 12 o'clock somewhere, I know. But so this time, so it's great to have you. Michael, you know, how was your weekend at Brands Hatch? I know you were really quick. Just points over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, it was a real roller coaster weekend for me um, on a on an emotional level, on a on a on a personal level. You know, I I I sort of started the weekend um, nice and chilled and relaxed, and uh, I was there nice and early. We done shakedown up at um, Tower Western. Uh, the car felt okay, and then we went and done the shakedown again at Brands, and it's sort of like I just found myself really nicely easing into the weekend, having that little half an hour on the Friday. Um, it sort of was really good for me, and um, then we went into Saturday, and uh, FP1, uh, we rocked up, and the car didn't quite feel like it did on the shakedown. It felt all right like, on the shakedown, but when we went into and we started pushing the limits, as you know, when you get on the edge. The car starts transforming and uh, when we got to the limits uh, we realized the car wasn't in the window and I, I came back in and um, we didn't run new tires obviously in FP1 but my teammate did and he was only half a second down the road and my engineer said look you ain't done a bad job there but I'm gonna change a few bits around and bits and pieces and uh, let's see how we go in FP2 and we run out on a new set and then um, just to get the balance right and uh, and I was quick I was P1 uh, yeah. Believe it. Um, and then we put a qualifying sim at the end and um, I got pipped by Jelly by a tenth but I was already a tenth up in the first sector on my next lap which uh, was great but then we boxed it uh, before I finished the lap because we sort of wanted to do a, do a tyre change to get the, get the um, pre-start for, for the next lap but um, yeah. yeah so I, I had a bit of pressure built on me like subconsciously none of the team or anyone put pressure on me but it was sort of got out of the car and you was expected that this is it like here we go you're going to have your first shot of pole position like and um i just think it maybe played on my mind a little bit and then we we had a bit of an upgrade um uh from cosworth uh with some technology between fb2 and qualifying and and it affected my dash my dash so as i've gone out in qualifying I had no times, I had no dash, and uh, you know, all I was trying to rely on was the radio, and it completely threw me out. And my first lap was a 47.9, uh, which put me P4, and they came on the radio and said P4. And then when I, the next lap, it said I was three temps quick, I said, let's box it, boys, that's pole position. No one's going to beat that lap time. I thought it was going to be it. And they were like, no, 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 you haven't gone quicker. And then, Second set of tyres in qualifying, I came out behind Jason, and Jason was really struggling uh, in the BTC Honda to get the balance right. I think he had a problem. And then the third set of tyres, uh, the track rubbered in, and I just didn't go any faster and ended up qualifying 17th. So uh, that was crazy. The thing, so I, it's, it shows you how tight it is, because I think there were 26, 27 cars covered by a second around brands, which I think is pretty unique. Uh, in any well, any series in the world, really, of being so so close, and it's just slight differences. You can have a car in FP2, which would have been the fastest car out there. The track slightly changes, the temperatures go up because it was a hot day on Saturday as well, and then suddenly your settings on the car have to be slightly different. You have to take that, but again, it's it's a guesstimate, isn't it, of of what you need to change to to roll with those conditions. Yeah, and my my engineer a guy called Rob Pearce, he, he I don't know you you probably know him, but he's um, he's fantastic, and me and him have just clicked. He's a lot like Steve Brady when I had Steve Brady for a very short time at BTC Racing. Um, you know, very calm character. They get me right in the right. You know what I'm like. I'm like a puppy at sometimes, and I, I you know they get me in the right frame of mind, and and uh, and then I can just deliver when I feel like that. I feel like I can beat anyone, and. Um, and I remember seeing you actually, and you know, you were like, good job, like everybody in the paddock, they sort of had to check the timetables that I was up there, you know, and uh, that's a nice, it's a nice feeling to know that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm here at work as a plumber, uh, running a plumbing and eating company, 
um, and and uh, th this is my day job, and and that's sort of like um, you know that's definitely becoming my 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 main focus, the job and the racing. But at the, unfortunately, at the moment, um, I'm still having to do this and instead of focusing on the racing. And I think you know, oh, it's, it's well. Yeah, sorry. Um, how tight it was at the top, but it was also quite interesting how fast it was at the weekend at Brands, particularly on the Saturday before the rain arrived. Because you know, I think Michael, you were probably one of the drivers that was under the previous qualifying lap record, and you were back in seventeenth place. And I know it was the same away from touring cars. You know, like Mini Challenge, I think there was something like twenty drivers were under the previous lap record. I mean, was part of that for you as a driver? Obviously, you've got the hybrid this year, and we've seen the hybrid cars seem to be a bit quicker, but also that little bit of resurfacing that's been at Brands Hatch, did that help you guys at all in the front-wheel drive? We know that it helped the rear-wheel drive cars a bit, but do you think that improved your car too? Yeah, I think it's, it's for any car. I think um, I was telling my friend who's racing classics there this weekend, it's just it's just different class now. Like you, But when you go into paddock, normally you, you always get the back sort of moving around and uh, and same with, um, even more so with Graham Hill Bend because you've always got a cold right rear um, because of those old left-handers. So it was really sketchy. But where with the new tarmac, you could just literally launch in there and the grip was there and you just drive around the corners. Even in the wet, it was the dry line at Paddock. Um, they resurfaced uh, Druids a couple of, about a year ago, a year and a half ago. So that was still grippy on the dry line. And then the dry line through Graham Hill. So it was, it was, really, it was really cool. Like even on the wet tyres, it was fine. So going back a little bit to when you were mentioning a little bit earlier about Saturday and how the track changed and, and how excited you get and the, your, your team has to calm you down a bit so you can concentrate. Now, the interesting thing is, it's been well documented, but which I think is a fantastic story, is that, is it five years ago? You hadn't even sat in a racing car, had you? And uh, up until that point. And you were, was it you were watching on South Bank and you went, you know, I fancy having a go at this. I'm, I, I think I could do this. And then you've, you've gone through the ranks. Is it started in, is it in Genetta's you started? And yeah, through? I mean, that, 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 that was like, it's so surreal every time I drive past that South Bank because me and, me and uh, my brothers and stuff, we used to sit there and watch. And, and, uh, and then it was just like, it was a throwaway comment. Oh, I'd love to do that one day. Like, um, never thought I'd ever obviously do anything. And then I started at go-karting, at higher kart racing at Butmore Park. And, and that's where I got spotted by John Surtees. And um, I won a championship then. And he, he sort of said, can you race in this higher cart championship? Uh, it, it, and it was the Henry Surtees Foundation, which me and my dad were, we were at Brands the day that he unfortunately died. And yeah. um, so it was a bit weird how that all happened for me. And, uh, and I'd, I'd, been, I'd seen uh, the Henry Surtees Foundation the, the, fall, the year before, because there was a guy called Jack Aiken, who obviously raced Formula One now. Um, he raced in that and he won the blue Henry Surtees Foundation trophy. And I even thought to myself, ah, oh, you know, I'd love to win one of them. But I came away that day. Uh, Steve Ryder was there with ITV filming it and stuff. And I came away with three, uh, and I've still got them, the pride of, pride of my trophy cabinet, but the three uh, Henry Surtees, because I got fastest lap of the day. I won the heavyweights and I come second overall in in a in a 15 minute go-kart race and um you know against jq's and uh, all these all these guys that have all gone on to do wonders in formula one and sports car racing and then that just sort of made me feel like when i've got the opportunity to go and race for once a race uh, in the genetta g40s with ben highland he um he taught me a lot you know he taught me a hell of a lot that guy and uh, it's he, he really spent a lot of time, and Max Coates and Jake Hill, all of these guys, Tom Oliphant, all were coaching me. And it must be so weird that I'm, I'm racing them nowadays. So they used to coach me like four years ago. Um, and and uh, it started there in the G40s. I ended up going out to Spain for a two-day test, and I, was quick, I came back quicker than Tom Oliphant. Uh, as he was my instructor, but he, he was struggling to um, heel and toe. But I, I found it, I'd never done it before, but they told me what to do. And I, I picked it up and I ended up coming home quicker than him from Gwadex. And then I turned up all to Park. It's a case of sometimes with, with less experience, you take on board people's input much easier. If you haven't got a preconceived idea of what you're meant to be doing, if somebody tells you how to do it, you just take it, learn it, move on, if you like. And that's a good and, skill to have. And Sean, 
if I could get have a pound for that because that is my biggest skill. Um, anyone who tells me to do anything, I, somehow I can go and do it. Like, it's just really weird. Like they said to me the other day at Brands in FB2, um, your, your attempts down from 30s, but or you're, you're, you're having too much of a lift. Uh, next lap I went out, I was, I, I, I done a, first lap I done a 80% lift, the next lap I done a 60% lift, and I was P1. And, and it, you know, there's little tricks like that where people are just saying, right, you need, to find, you need to roll off the brakes five meters later. And you think five meters at 130 mile an hour, how am I even going to judge that? But you sort of do it. And, uh, and I, don't know, I don't know how, but it, it works. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the great with, with data and stuff now. I mean, it was not that long ago. I mean, I was probably 20, 30 years. You didn't have any data and everything. So it would have been much harder, I think, than to somebody to come in with, with, with your sort of level of experience to come in and be competitive in a British touring car series because you didn't have data to have a look at with your teammate and things like that. So, I mean, we are talking a while ago. But that's a fantastic tool to actually be a lot more inclusive for people coming into the sport who haven't had a massively long karting career or single seaters and then coming into it. And I think that opens up the whole scene to, to anybody to say, yeah, I, I'm watching on South Bank. I can come and give this a go. Yeah, and I've had some great teachers. You've got to remember, I've had the best in the business with, with people like uh, Josh Cook. You know, He really did bring me on in 2020 as a, as a driver. Tom Oliphant, Jake, you know, all these guys. Uh, Jack Goff in 2019 when I first come in, Bobby Thompson, even though that he was still new to it, he had already had a previous season and I was bouncing off people like this and I just learn. I'm like a sponge, honestly. And and now, I, do you know what? I don't think I gave myself any enough credit because I've taken the lead role, as it were, at Power Max Racing this year. And, and for me to dial that car in at Brands Act and be one of the fastest cars out there, um, that that's all thanks to me and Rob, uh, you know, working together and the team at Powermax, and 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 that's a great feeling to know that I can, I can actually feel what's going on and report back, and they're changing the car, and we're getting quicker. Um, I never had to do that because I've always had Tom Chilton or Josh Cook going, oh, this and this, and I and I do it, and and that's that's the pat on the back that I've really given myself so far in the first two rounds because I think Brands Act would have been my first podium or possibly a win, uh, the way that I watched the third race from the sideline. And, I, 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 you know, first race, I went from 17th, I was up to 10th. Um, and then I developed a gearbox problem. I couldn't go down the gears. Um, so mid-race, I've dropped from 10th to 13th behind Ash Sutton and my teammate, uh, Ash Han, come past. But I had to think on my feet. I was having to dip the clutch. I was having to blink. Yeah. I was having to work out how to drive around the problem instead of pitting. And I still finished 12th. And I just think that I'm maturing as a driver so much every time I get in the car. And I think if I can keep this learning curve going, I'm only getting better. All of them other boys are all at their peak. Turkington's, Hills, Cookies, all of these are levelled out. They're at the best. I'm only getting better every time I get in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yes, I mean, what would you say then, Michael, from someone who, you know, over the last couple of years you've had... You've mentioned there you've had the experience of, you know, Josh Cooks, Tom Chilton, Jack Goffs alongside you. What's been the biggest challenge for you this year, not having that experience alongside you from a driving perspective and, you know, effectively becoming, with a couple of seasons under your belt, the experienced touring car driver in the Power Max lineup? Um, you know, it, 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 it's weird because I've got Martin Broadhurst, who's a very experienced guy and he's a, he's a good team leader. Um, I've got, and I've got a very good engineer. The thing that I miss the most is, is when you get out and, and, and you know, say at Donington, I just couldn't find that last sort of two tenths or a tenth. And I was thinking, you know, but when you have, you have a cook or a Chilton, at some point at every corner, they've got it right between them. And, and when Ash Hand, obviously new to it, I don't expect, you know, he's quick and he's going to definitely, you know, he out-qualified me at, um, at Brands Hatch. Uh, he is going to get there, but... At, at this sort of current time, back to what Sean was saying, the data, if you're the quickest guy and you're not there, then you haven't got nothing to compare against. And, and the problem I've got this year, and why it's even more of um, uh, a compliment, is because you can't compare back. This car is completely different to every previous year. 
I can't go back and look at Jason's data or Dan Lloyd's data or, or Josh Cook's data from 2018 because it's a completely different car with the hybrid, with the weight, with, you know, the way that it's evolved, uh, you know, the new layout um, uh, brands, the new tarmac, everything's different. So I'm having to do everything on my own um, at the moment. We've well, uh, also, another thing that changed, which is a big thing as well, the engine as well, because obviously you're running the Toka engine, which is now the M Sport engine, which is, a, you know, a different beast than it was before. Um, so that's, that's quite a big change. So if you think about it, your car is 75% completely different than it has been in the past obviously with the hybrid side as well i mean what what do you think how have the team found hybrid wise setup changes that they've had to make you obviously you came came into it and you've had pre-season testing um i mean what were the big changes you had to make to work with hybrid well the, we were lucky in a way more so than people like dynamics i suppose and stuff like that because our engine has changed from swindon to the m sport and it's about 15 kilos lighter but then, obviously, every car's got radiators on the front now and the cooling and the motors, which is about 15 kilos heavier. So the geometry of our car hasn't changed too much from, from the front end, where the Dynamics car has now got 15 kilos on the front and the weight in the side. So, you know, it's, that, that must take them a little while. And I think that's probably why they haven't been firing on all cylinders, if, if I'm honest, from what I've seen so far. And maybe that's because I know Shedden got the race win, but it, the car doesn't look as, you know, that chassis is a brilliant chassis. But that's why the BTC car looks a lot quicker because, again, they've gone from the Swindon engine to the, to the M Sport and haven't had to change the car as much. Um, yeah, yeah. So if that makes sense, I know that's getting a bit too technical probably for some of the viewers, but uh, you know that was a that was a positive for us and and just just the general weight of having the weight in the car. The Powermax car over the last couple of years has only you know it had five podiums, so it carried a little bit of weight last year in uh, a few rounds, but a lot of the rounds it was it was empty of weight and it was you know it was quick when it had no weight, but it wasn't so quick when it had weight. So. We've had to develop the car now to carry this way, and, and I think we've done a fantastic job of it so far. And going back to brands a little bit, you're, so you had a, a great start to the weekend on Saturday. Qualifying didn't quite go to plan, but still competitive and, and could have been further up the grid. But then it sort of slightly unravelled after that sort of fairly good opening performance. And, and unfortunately, I don't know if I've seen a video of it on the internet, and it's a little bit one of those things at brands where there's, there's never enough room for three of them, especially if, if the gaps get a bit smaller. But I mean, that's an unfortunate, and especially as, as you ended up bumping into your teammate, both of you together as well, which you both look slightly innocent parties, to be honest, when I looked at it. Um, uh, and it's difficult yeah. to see. But what, I mean, how was it from your point? Yeah, I think, you know, I've watched it a million times uh, trying to get my head around actually what happened because I got an okay start. Obviously, Gamble was behind me in the, in the BMW, got a rocket start off, uh, came up the outside. Um, but what I see is Chilton got a great start, to be fair, and he came off the, he launched off well and he, we sort of touched. But then I see him there and I thought, well, I'd give him a little bit of room. I've gone left and nudged Gamble. Gamble was on the outside, so I said, right, okay. So we've, we've stayed straight um, and Chilton's got a rocket through the middle. Robottom and Ash Han both tried to squeeze him. Instead of sort of staying straight and just going, OK, you know, Chilton's got a good start. Let him go through and we all, we all sort it out of the first corner. They've done what, what's, you know, what, like Dan Robottom's come one way, Ash has come the other, pitched him and, and then Ash has just fired across the front. But the, the thing was, I knew Gamble was there. I could have probably tried to go left, but then I would have caused Gamble into a spin and across the track would have been dangerous. And I just thought, the only place I can go is just straight into my teammate. I was, you know, and then I, I hit the wall um, and we only had frontal damage um, on the car. But as I've come off, Jelly checked up because he was behind us. Moffitt hit Jelly. Moffitt's bonnet went up and then Jelly hit Patterson and then, for, and just how unlucky I was, is I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Patterson's come across the road on the second incident down by Paddock and hit me square on the side and it bent the roll cage. He hit me so hard. Um, oh, right. Okay. So, and, so we didn't, did we see that on TV? I don't think we saw that on TV. No, it's, it, on that video that I put on the internet, what, yeah. some, what, a, what a fan put on, it shows it right at the very top of the end bit. Okay. And it's Patterson actually hitting me really hard. And, 
<laughs> but the funny thing was, Sean, I've come bounced off the wall with all this is going on. My, both my mirrors are gone. It hit me so hard, all my windows shattered, so I couldn't see anything. Um, and I thought, oh, this feels all right. I'll just carry on. So I just carried on, and uh, I was, came out, and I was catching Jade Edwards. And I was thinking, but the car just wouldn't turn left, like, properly through 30s. And I was thinking, ah. Oh. And then they called me in, and they said, you've got to stop. And I got out. I couldn't believe the car was, like, obliterated. Like, the radiators were hang, dragging along the ground. And, um, but it goes to show, the car was still quite quick, even with all that damage. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, sometimes as well, you can, you can get a, a big hit in the side. You get extra toe out on the rear. And you suddenly go, well, that actually feels really good. You know, obviously, you can sometimes go the other way. But that's why, why haven't we tried that for the, for the rest of the weekend? Yeah. But um, it's good. But going, on, going forwards, we've got Thruxton coming up. And I remember you having a fantastic race at Thruxton. Where there's, there's you, you, were, you in the, were you in the BTC Honda then? Was that yeah, it? me. You, me, you, me, were, uh, you were fighting with Matt Neal in, yeah. the, in the Dynamics Honda. And I was going, wow. You know, around Thruxton, you know, fighting with Matt Neal, it's, that's, that's a pretty big... Did he have a puncture or something? I can't remember. Yeah, something... well, it was... It, and, and do you know what? Even though I got a puncture at the end and I, and I went flying backwards, I got out with the biggest grin on my face and, and uh, Mickey come up to me. And it was, it was probably self-induced, the puncture, because um, I, I had Matt Neal in front of me and I think he was fifth. I was sixth and Colin Turkington was seventh behind me. And Turkington was really, really... He rocketed through the field because he came from the back. And he got behind me and, I, and, and he was really pushing me. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm right up here. Like, it's my best ever race. I'm just not going not gonna to roll over. I'm going to make it difficult. And, um, and we, were, we were going and I was, I was quicker than Matt through the complexes. But he was quite fast out the back. And... Um, so I was lining him up for a move into the first corner because I was so much faster around the first corner and into the first complex. So the team came on, said two laps to go. So the, the lap before, I nudged the barrier on the left to open up the last chicane. And um, so I thought, right, I've got him now because he ain't going to expect me to, I'm going to rock it through the chicane and do him at the corner. And uh, so I jumped, I jumped on the chicane and it just popped the tyre and I was like, no. Oh. So it, it, was, it was my, my fault, I hit the curb. But it, the, what was amazing about that weekend is after the race on the Monday and Tuesday, I got a message from Colin uh, and a message from Matt. And um, they're two guys that I've watched over many, many years. And, and for Colin Turkington to say, well, you were just miles quicker than me through church. I never thought I'd ever hear that, <laughs> hear that from him. And, uh, and Matt said, you know, you pushed me all the way. And, and it, I just, that was, that was another pinch yourself moment and bucket list moment for me. And, uh, and I'm, look, I, I, I hate the place. I absolutely shit myself. I'm sorry, I, but around that round there, uh, I'm terrified of it. But for some reason, I, I, I do all right now. <laughs> So, I mean, we're going to throw, I mean, one of the big changes this year is obviously the hybrid system coming in, which is, is a massive technical exercise for the teams, which is a, is a big deal. Um, but also, I think it's a real technical exercise and a real driving test, if you like, for the drivers, because you've got this other, other really important part of getting a quick lap time together is, is, is there with that. Now, going to Thruxton, because everybody thinks Thruxton's all about, you know, being fast paced. I don't know if you've disappeared, Michael. I can't see. Oh, sorry. No, oh, back. you're back. You're back. There you go. That's all right. That's all right. The joys of the internet. But yeah. actually, going to front the things I've heard that, that it's a very important part of the racing now, but also how to get a fast lap time. But it's how much you're going to actually have of that, um, because apparently there's not enough regeneration on the braking on the lap, and I don't know if that's. And I think they've got a test in FP1 coming up where they've got a, a, an extra test, if you like, just for the electronic side of things. Uh, which should be interesting to see, you know, because it's new technology. It's a huge investment on the team's part. Um, and, and, and I've got to say, I, I, I think it really had something to the racing. And I haven't always been the, the biggest fan of the hybrid side of it. But driver-wise, for you, it's, it's got to add another... It can help you or it can hinder you, can't you, if somebody else gets advantage, gets their head around it and using it in the right place on the lap. Definitely. I, I, I was a bit sceptical, if I'm honest. Um, and I still a little bit. I love driving with it. And there's so much more to do. It's like a computer game in your head now. But I don't think it's making the racing... Um, you know, at the moment, the first few rounds have been good. But 
I think you can honestly see uh, as the same driver winning all three races. I don't think there's enough of a balance to mix yeah. it up. And, um, but that that's all learning curve, you know. I'm sure Toka are learning off of it as much as we are. Um, but going to Fruxton, right? I think I think it's going to be a real challenge. I mean, we, it's one thing that me and Rob have worked on so much is how to deploy it, where to deploy it, and when's the best to deploy it. Because um, you've got different torque curves and different, you know, rev ranges and stuff that you can mm. use it on. Um, but I think Fruxton is going to be really difficult because not only does uh, it changed the setup because notoriously, me and me, and, me and Josh, you know, we take off the PTP button. We have a soft limiter because you're normally hitting sixth gear in the limiter there. But I think you're going to have to change a lot of ratios um, and a lot of setup on the car. In my head already, I'm thinking that you know. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of different different techniques and different tactics. You know, you've got to think about the toe, you've got to think about the button, you've got to think about even if you're on your own, you don't want to be too boggy. You know, all of these enter your head going into the weekend. And I and I just find um, I had a good hour and on the phone last night with my engineer. And we ran through so much stuff going in to Fruxton. Um, and like you say, yeah, let's hope. You know, it, it might be a great move to regen while you're halfway for a race to keep in contention because that's a whole new new box of tricks. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It you know, definitely, I think it gives the driver a lot more to think about. Um, yeah. and, and then the, the better the driver is, the more brain space he's usually got to deal with that stuff. So, yeah. you know, it'll be interesting to see. But also set up because it's notoriously hard on on tyres at Thruxton. <clears throat> and I think with everybody having extra weight as well, that would be interesting to see who, who pushes maybe too far and they could be quick in qualifying, but if they carry that set up into the race, it's not going to work for them because they won't get, they won't get to the end of it. No, I mean, that, that, the, the good thing about that is that we all get new tyres again, obviously, because it's the only two rounds that we use the hard tyre. Um, but, yeah, you know, notoriously, I think Goodyear have done a good job with the tyres since all them punctures that we had a few years ago. Oh, yeah. I think they're a lot more durable now. Um, and I, 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 the, the thing for me is, in my mindset, all week has been, I've got to hit the ground running. We've got new boots for FP1 and FP2, and we, we've, got to, we've got to hit that hard and carry the momentum. And, and if I'm struggling down in 20 if on FB1, then I'm going to be scratching my head thinking, what, what, what's going wrong here? Because uh, the only thing I would say I'm a bit nervous about is the Honda uh, around there is the best chassis on the grid, for sure. Um, you know, it's so planted out the back and it's, it's really good through the, through the change of direction in the co complexes where, for instance, this Astra... Um, I'm literally like holding on to it for dear life because we have to set it up quite loose to get a lap time out of it. So I'm not quite looking forward to driving it out the back there. But Rob assures me that he's uh, he's going to set it up nice and uh, nice and compliant, as his words were. I think the other thing that's interesting going to Thruxton is obviously you know all the teams have now got two weekends of experience with the hybrid, but we had that test at Thruxton before the season started, and that test the season launch one, we had some teams run without problems, so they would have been able to collect a nice chunk of data to take into the weekend, whereas there were other teams that were still fit in hybrid systems, didn't get any hybrid running. You know, you guys at Powermax were, were still getting your head around the hybrid. So in that respect, you know, you guys might be on the back foot a little bit. You say you want to hit the ground running, but it might not be as easy for you guys as it will be for WSR, who had, you know, three cars running that day and were able to get plenty of mileage with the hybrid under the belt. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment. I think that's a we. I mean, we did. That was the first time we run it, and we didn't do any morning running at all. So we were still bolting bits and pieces into the car, and um, uh, you know, we got out in the afternoon, and it was deployed and everything on the dash, but it didn't actually give me any power. Uh, it wasn't actually, you know, it was working all on the dash, and we pulled away in the electric, but we actually, it wasn't actually giving us any power out on the track. So, but you know, I think. If I'm honest, I, 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 I'm hoping that we've got our heads around it enough now. I mean, I'm quite switched on with it, where to regen, where to look at the battery deployment, where, you know, I've been doing a lot of work on that, where I heard uh, some drivers, I don't know if Sean can add to this, that they, they're so engrossed in racing, they keep forgetting to even push the button. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've what? So, 
when, when I'm not doing this, I'm sort of team manager for Jake Hill with the MB Motorsport car at the weekend. West Surrey, obviously, they're sort of super in charge. I'm just sort of a, an overseer, really. Team manager is a bit of a grandiose title. But I know, I know Jake won't thank me for saying this, but I know he's coming. Oh, yeah, I didn't use it that lap, but I forgot to use it. And I think that's, yeah, yeah that was only in FP2 or something like that. But the, it, it's, it is another, another thing to add into the yellow. I think it's, I think, especially if it, so on a one lap thing, that's fine. But if you think you're in the gag loop, which is quite common at Thruxton, I mean, I've had people say that they get boring racing at Thruxton. I always find it quite exciting because I know, I think I know how hard you're all working going around there. So if there's a train of six cars, very, very easy to have a quick moment. Somebody's on the button half a second earlier than you, they're going to get a run on you. I think it's to make it quite exciting. I mean, and, and, as, and as the system develops and, and, and the bugs are sorted out, you know, that we should get rid of some of the, some of the sort of the, the unreliability, which is obviously going to be happening with a new system. You can't help it. No, nobody develops that sort of level of technology without any problems, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, I think it'd be fantastic to see. I mean, going back to the test earlier in the year, I think there were only three drivers who, who did a proper race run there. That was Rory Butcher, uh, Colin Turkington and Jake Hill, um, which is quite interesting out of, you know, 29 cars, you know, to only have those three who managed to get a race run on, on that test day, because that would have been one of the first things that everybody was doing. So it shows you that everybody was still working, getting the cars actually working in the first place. It was quite an early, early start to the season there. So I, I'm, I'm quite looking, I think there's a bit of a mixed grid, I think, at Thruxton. And hopefully you're up the sharp end. Oh, wouldn't it be amazing though, just uh, just to get one podium for me? You know, I'm not even bothered about a win, but just a podium for the fans. And I've had so much support, honestly. Like, and and with the fans, and 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 you know, they're a big part. You know, even when I was talking to you as a team That's manager, you, we, we, you look for an all rounder as a team boss. I would imagine more, you know, than someone who's got a hell of a lot of talent with with no budget. I mean, I'm sort of bringing a bit of budget. I'm bringing uh, a lot of support and, and family support as well. And I just, I just think, um, you know, like sometimes for a team, they need that as a, as a, as a package uh, instead of just an outright, you know, two, two drivers that can, that can go and, you know, obviously race the best in the world. But, I, I, and that's why I think building the fan support and what I've done, I think that's half the reason where I've got to, if I want to, Sean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's it. you. You interact with the fans fantastically well, um, and I think that's that stems from you not being long ago being one of them sitting in <laughs> South Bank and watching, so you know exactly what. And, and so is every, and, and everybody. I used to, when I was a you know kid, used to go along and watch and watch. But everybody's got a sort of a passion for motorsport, but actually, not everybody always vocalizes it as well as you do. Which actually, in this day and age, with social media and all that sort of side of things, you've got to interact. What well, you've, you've got to interact, and then it engages people in what you're doing, and then people are interested in putting some money in and, and helping you get on the grid. And that's what it's all about. I mean, this and anybody who says we're in this, you know, they, sometimes people like get they get a bit funny about drivers. Oh, he hasn't got enough money, so he hasn't got a seat. And well, I said that's that's part of the deal. You know, you, it doesn't it doesn't happen without support behind you and I know you've got a lot of loyal supporters who without their support you wouldn't be on the grid yeah and and, and but the sponsors are so hard to come up with, right? but if you can you know add something different to their marketing campaign or whatever they want to do and you know I, I, I done I done uh, the Facebook live for the year with Paul O'Neill and and that's what really yes. propelled me into the, to the scene. And then now I do this little campsite live. You know, it's great. I look on there, I've had 4,000 views since Brands Hatch. And, you know, and a lot of people like contact me, oh, are you doing, are you doing campsite live? Where I go out into the campsite. But the, the, all this sort of stuff is the stuff that I, when I was a fan, I used to see Jason Plato walk past me. Oh, I'd love to go and say hello. But he was always a bit like, oh, no, no, he won't. You know, I won't bother. Um, and I just want to make myself accessible, accessible. the team. I, I, I love the, when the kids come along and they want to jump in the car yeah. and they're the first time in a race car. And, you know, like they're the memories that you have as a kid growing up and you don't forget yeah. them. And, and um, you know, and, that, and that's, why, that's why I do it. I, I, love, I love the sport. I love, I love what you guys do. I love the media. I love, I love the, you know, the fact that everyone can get so much enjoyment out of it. But it does make me laugh. I feel like uh, I'll come off cloud nine on a race weekend feeling like a bit of a mini celebrity. And then I go to work on a building site on a Monday morning. and uh... <laughs> Go sort of dripping tap out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, I don't get my hands dirty anymore, Sean. But, oh, that's, that's I, I'm pleased about that. I'm pleased about that. That's good, good. Well, Michael, I think it's been brilliant having a chat with you. Good luck at Thruxton. You've obviously got some great pace in that Vauxhall, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of you. And I, I think I might, I might put a tenner on you getting a podium at some point this year. <laughs> oh, mate, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, it'd be great. It'd be great. Matt, thanks very much. Um, thanks for joining us, everybody. Looking forward to Thruxton. We'll see you after Thruxton and see how everybody gets on. Cheers, guys. Really appreciate the support.